So one of the other classes and workshops we offer is on how to make your own biochar. So biochar is part of the natural ecology of this region. We used to have wildfires that would come through and deposit a layer of biochar on the soil that would eventually get worked into the soil during wildfire season in early spring in time for when the monsoons would come that would work it into the soil. So biochar is the black components of this. If you take a look compared to the white, and what it is is it's charcoal basically and its benefits for plants and growing in your garden is that the char will actually have multiple pores throughout the material which when you apply water to it either in rain or by irrigation will absorb the water particles and hold on to them then the next couple of days as the soil around it dries out it will wick the water right back into your soil so one watering event can continue to water your garden for several days. So unlike compost, which adds nutrients to the soil, biochar doesn't actually add any nutrients to your soil. What it does is it creates a condition that the microbes in your soil enjoy, the beneficial microbes, and it helps to foster an environment for them to flourish and succeed. So if you combine this with your compost, the compost will bring in the microbiology that you need from your soil microbes, the fungi, the bacteria, and the biochar will create the environment that will continue to allow those populations to grow. And those populations in turn help to provide the nutrients for your plants. So a couple of words about biochar safety. First, you wanna make sure that it's not a windy day that you decide to make your biochar fire. Second, make sure you have a water source, a water hose, things ready to go if things should get out of hand. Make sure you don't have your pit anywhere near close to a shed or a building or a tree or something else that could catch on fire. It's a good idea to line your biochar pit with using bricks or something else. You could even do it in uh, one of the metal barrels. Some people will do their biochar in that as well. But basically the materials that you want to use are gonna be woody biomass. So your typical yard and garden waste, branches, leaves, weeds, all those sorts of things. You wanna start with some type of thin material as our kindling to start with. Some people even get those little fire starters and things like that. You can use that to start. Make sure it's good and dry. And then as that gets started, you can add some more materials to it. So the idea with biochar is that you want the black char, not white. So the idea when you're building this is to keep smothering the flame. So you're gonna keep adding things to it to kind of smother it. So this way it cuts off the oxygen to the lower part and it leaves it as that black charcoal. And you can see there's a lot of smoke if there's wet materials, it will smoke much more than the dry materials, but you can still burn both for biochar, that doesn't matter. Cardboard and paper are just fine. So this technique works really well for yard waste, smaller diameter pieces of wood, branches, things like that. This is also a very great way to get rid of tumbleweeds because because it destroys the plants and it actually destroys the seeds. It's one of the few ways. So a couple of things to be careful for. Don't burn any garbage or any plastics in your biochar pile. So you want to be very careful about oleander. It's a great plant for this region. It's really drought tolerant and very common, but it produces a noxious gas when it's burned, which is poisonous. So you do not want to get any of this in your biochar pile. So if you're gonna buy biochar in the store, if you go on Amazon, it's typically from $12 to $25 for a small bag of biochar. So you can save yourself quite a bit of money by making biochar yourself. This right here is probably about 50 bucks worth of biochar that we got for free from our yard waste that we had to get rid of anyway. So when you're ready to end your biochar fire, what you wanna do is soak it really well with water, completely drench it so you're sure there are no more flames left. It's all done. What we'll also do is the water will wash away some of that lighter ash that was forming on the outside and just leave you with biochar behind. Now, if you let this burn all the way down overnight, what it's gonna do is turn all this biochar into ash. And that's not what we want. We wanna keep biochar. I would usually let this cool down overnight before I would use it. So you wouldn't plan to use biochar the same day that you make it. Let it cool thoroughly and then you can add it to your plants. There's several methods for applying your biochar. The first is that you can sprinkle it right on the top of the soil, right above the roots on your plants if you have them out in the garden. The other method is to mix it with your potting soil and you can use it for potted plants. The recommended concentration for biochar is between five and 10% is the ideal. You'll get the maximum amount of benefits with that. 
The third method that people use is just to use biochar as a complete growing medium. So you can grow your plants in these pots with just biochar in place of sphagnum peat moss or coconut coir or um, hydrotone. And it'll be a sterile media that can be used for growing.